it's 2020, one of the worst years for most of humanity and one of the most important years to learn about science. But oddly enough, our scientists don't have much time talking about the groundbreaking insights and discoveries they made and about new ways to save our lives and our planet. Because our scientists have to explain space is real, the moon is real, there are no reptilians, earth is not flat and vaccines don't cause autism. And because of the thing that shall not be named, we need our scientists in science and we need vaccinated humans. And there's a big, big thing coming because the anti-vax community is growing. What's up you guys? Or as we say in Germany, was geht ab Leute? My name is Jesse and welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about vaccines and why there's so many people hesitant. And because this is such a huge and important topic, especially right now, I'd like to split it up into a multiple part series and start today with the hesitancy. So let's just jump in to part one. Why do people decide to not vaccinate themselves or even their kids? There's not much malice playing into these decisions. The new mother turns to Google or Facebook to learn about vaccines and the safety of kind of their child. And she learns on there, if you are a good mother, you must not vaccinate your kid. You read about so many horror stories. The mother who vaccinated her kid and the kid three weeks later just fell ill or a father who vaccinated his kid and it died sadly a few weeks later and we get frightened understandably because most parents are scared to death to make a decision that can lead to harm to their kids the big question i had when beginning researching for this video was how is it possible that so many people share a belief of the cause of some diseases despite no evidence regarding it? And the article I found at first talks about local vaccination cultures that can influence the decision of to vaccinate or not to vaccinate, kind of with the skepticism of big pharma, the media and all that convoluted stuff and that's why I think now we have to take a deep dive into the different reasons may play into these decisions. The skepticism regarding vaccines may be a consequence of the focus in promoting of healthcare to lifestyle and individual health. And that means the patient's involvement in their own decision-making and health is greater than ever. But, it, but at times the level of mistrust and the lack of knowing where to find credible information affects these decisions in a bad way. But that is not entirely due to the lack of information or the mistrust, but of course due to the past controversies vaccines have had. These controversies have affected the acceptance of vaccines massively. For example, the association between the hepatitis B vaccine and multiple sclerosis. In France, this led to the suspension of the whole vaccination program in the 90s, despite the fact that many studies have found no evidence for that kind of an association. And the most recent and well-known case is the fraudulent study of an association between the MMR vaccine and autism. It was highly publicized in most countries, I think, and rapidly just diffused off into the nothingness. But despite the media presence when those news broke loose, 
when it gets corrected or even entirely debunked, the media has gone to the next big thing. So most scared people won't even know about the wrongfulness of the beliefs they hold. In my personal opinion, there should be a duty of the media to correct those kind of information. When a media outlet reports on a study claiming that these vaccinations cause autism, they should have the integrity to report the corrected information to those people. But first of all, we need some more integrity in general in the whole Western media because in our Western world, fewer and fewer people trust in media, big companies, the government and big pharma. So it's safe to say media have played a big, big role in keeping those scares alive, despite the fact that there's so many evidence securing the safety and effectiveness of vaccines. A study has shown the impact of those anti-vax movements in Pertussis cases. They compared Pertussis incidents in countries where high coverage with diphtheria tetanus Pertussis vaccines, DTP, was maintained with countries where immunization was disrupted by anti-vaccine movements. Pertussis incidence was 10 to 100 times lower in countries where high vaccine coverage was maintained than in countries where immunization programs were compromised in anti-vaccine movements. So there's enough data showing that these anti-vax movements are harmful to so many people. And I know these people don't mean to. They're just afraid. They think they're doing a good thing. But what I think, and this article uh, shows also, the anti-vax movement is har harmful. And the internet is a big, big problem in all of these things. Although the internet has the potential of providing us with all the information there is, it also has the same potential of misleading us into complete wrong directions. The internet has offered a platform for vocal anti-vax activists to diffuse their message rapidly. And the presence of personal stories of harm and death are overshadowing all those numbers and data we have because personal stories are more intuitive than numbers but people have to understand that numbers are way more evidential than personal stories anecdotal evidence is the least relying is the least reliable evidence we have and the misinformation is so easy to not notice. As I mentioned in my last video about quantum healing, the way you try to get to your information is so important because the search engines are looking for what you give them. And if you give them just vaccines cause autism, the result will show you the thing you searched. You will just see stuff where people talk about vaccines causing autism that has nothing to do with searching for the truth and this has been demonstrated in a study in a study simulating a patient search for advice on the potential link between mmr and autism using the google search engine researchers have reported that only 51 percent of the websites provided the correct information about the fact that no association has ever been demonstrated between mmr vaccination and autism that has to change 49 percent of the websites provided have had the wrong information so no wonder there are so many people thinking vaccines can cause autism and all these crazy diseases that are in no shape, way or form linked to vaccines. Most of these websites use the same repetitive arguments of the existence of 
poisons in vaccines and they appeal to our emotions in those stories about harm and damage and fear. But on the factuality of these statements, I will go deeper into in another part of those of the series. Most of these arguments used by those anti-vax groups is a good example of a big phenomenon at the moment of denialism. Denialism can be defined as the employment of rhetorical arguments to give the appearance of legitimate debate where there is none. An approach that has the ultimate goal of rejecting a proposition on which a scientific consensus exists. Something along the lines of the earth is flat, but more dangerous. Whether it is to deny evolution, climate change, or the fact that vaccines do not cause autism, research has shown that denialists employ similar tactics such as relying on conspiracy theories, using fake experts, purposely selecting only supportive evidence and discrediting all other, creating impossible expectations of what research can deliver or using logical fallacies. The result of a large-scale experiment has shown that just 5 to 10 minutes have a hugely negative effect on the decision-making for pro or against vaccines. That is ridiculous. When you go on the internet, it is so hard to find correct and reliable information regarding vaccines. And therefore, there are so many people believing the misinformation because these anti-vax websites claim to be factual. They claim to have studies, but their studies are just anecdotal evidence. And although the data is suggesting next to no harm, there's more research needed to back up these claims. And if so, we need better media coverage and more integrity altogether. Because without trust in media, no one will believe anything they report on. And we need to explain calmly to anti-vaxxers that their decisions can lead to harm for themselves, their family, and potentially everyone else. Because calmly explaining and having a conversation will do more than trying to bully someone into a decision. Of course, we all make fun of people and have a shady ass time, but if you want to have a positive result, you need to be calm and talk to people like they're intelligent humans, because they are. They're just on the wrong path. Here I will wrap up part one and I hope you enjoyed it. The next video will be a completely different one because when I upload this video I will be in an orthopedic rehabilitation for three to four weeks so maybe I will do a vlog type of video or maybe just a rant thing we'll see but certainly I'll try to upload more frequently. Anyways, I hope you did like the video, if so, please leave a like and subscribe down below and hopefully you will tune in for the next video. Either way, stay safe and stay sane. Bye guys.